Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Carrie Douglas arrested, charged with assaulting and obstructing police. Controversial counselor for the Trafalgar Division, the Jamaica Labour Party JLP Carrie Douglas, was arrested and charged with assaulting and obstructing the police during an operation in Swallowfield St. Andrew Friday night. She is due to face court on March 16 to answer to the charges. According to the police, Douglas was among a group of people at a gathering in the community at about 8.30 p.m. This was about a half an hour into the national curfew which runs from 8 p.m. until 5 a.m. each day. She reportedly used her vehicle to block the police while they were arresting a man who was a part of the gathering. However, Douglas who has had a previous run-in with the police, has denied the allegation and has said she was attacked by a policeman. She claimed that she is being targeted for political reasons because she switched membership from the People's National Party to the JLP in February last year. She has denied the version of the story given by the police. In a statement issued on her behalf on Saturday, Douglas strongly denied what she said were allegations that she assaulted and obstructed a policeman during the Swallowfield incident. According to the statement, the counselor was in the area when she observed an incident where the police appeared to be physically attacking and beating a constituent who was known to have mental challenges. The constituent is now in hospital receiving treatment. The statement said Douglas verbally reminded the police that the constituent is known to be mentally ill when she was accosted and attacked by a policeman. She said she has become a target of the police for political reasons. Based on politically charged comments made during the incident last night and during a previous incident, I am of the view that I am being targeted by a few police personnel because of my recent decision to cross the political aisles. I look forward to my day in court and the opportunity to once again prove my innocence, Douglas said. She said she will reserve further comment on the matter, given that it is before the court. She has asked that further inquiries be directed to her attorney, Queen's Counsel Peter Champagny. Last September, prosecutors discontinued a case against Douglas, who was accused of breaching the Disaster Risk Management Act. The charges arose from an incident in April, where it was alleged that Douglas became boisterous when she was stopped by the police along Meadowbrook Avenue in St. Andrew. Jamaican woman in custody for allegedly killing woman in Bahamas. A Jamaican woman who posted a video on social media trying to claim her name following an incident in which she was accused of fatally stabbing another female is now in police custody in Bahamas. Police investigators in that country did not identify the suspect in their custody but said she was being questioned. However, a flyer purportedly created by the police was circulated on social media identified the woman's name and alias. It was reported that on Saturday, February 20th at about 11 p.m., the now deceased only identified as Lakeisha and the Jamaican woman were engaged in an argument in a parking lot on West Bay Street in the Bahamas. The dispute subsequently escalated and the Jamaican is alleged to have stabbed the woman several times in the back according to the Bahamian media outlet, The Tribune. The wounded woman was taken to the hospital where she succumbed to her injuries a day later. Shortly after, a photograph of the Jamaican was released urging persons to provide information that could lead to her arrest. In response, the Jamaican made two live videos recording, which were posted on social media, in which she admitted that she stabbed the woman but claimed her actions were in self-defense. You, the deceased, is not my mother nor my daughter. Don't put your hand on me, the Jamaican said in one of the videos. And if you're dead, I sorry you're dead because I didn't mean to do it. I was defending myself, okay? So if you're dead, I'm sorry and may your soul rest in peace because we never mean to kill you, she expressed. The Jamaican, sporting green hair and dark glasses, was seemingly shocked that the woman had died despite claiming that she gave her the now deceased two stabs. 
Dem I say, me give you how much stab. Me no give you no how much stab. I give you two stab. So how you dead? I give you two stabs. Two stabs, she further stated. The Jamaican said she was not hiding and lashed out at those who were circulating her photographs on social media. It is not clear how long after the video recording were posted the Jamaican was arrested by the Bahamian police. Up to Friday, she was not formally charged with any offence. Chris Gale recalled to West Indies T20 squad for Sri Lanka series. Explosive batsman Chris Gale has been recalled to the West Indies 2020 international squad for the upcoming series against Sri Lanka at the College Cricket Ground in Antigua. The 2020 international series will be played on March 3rd, 5th and 7th. If the 41-year-old Gale does play in the series, it will be the first time he has represented West Indies in any format since August 2019 when he played a one-day international against India. Gale's recall was expected after the Jamaican left from the sixth edition of the Pakistan Super League after playing just two matches to return to the Caribbean. West Indies and Sri Lanka will play three T20 internationals, three ODIs and a couple of test matches in a biosecured environment in Antigua. The T20 International Series will create history as the first official international matches to be played by the West Indies men's team at the College Cricket Ground and the first West Indies men's T20 Internationals to be played in Antigua since 2013. Experienced fast bowler Fidel Edwards has also been named in the T20 squad, also making a return to the international stage while all spinner Kevin Sinclair earns his first West Indies selection and left arm spinner Akil Hossein gives his first T20 call up. West Indies will use the 2020 International Series as important preparation for the defense of their T20 World Cup title, which is scheduled to be held in India later this year. If Gale plays at the T20 World Cup, he will be 42. As we build toward the defense of the T20 World Cup, the opportunity is being taken to determine our best team and squad as we go forward, Roger Harper, Cricket West Indies CWI lead selector said. Chris Gale has performed very well in recent tournaments and the selection panel thinks that he can still add great value to our team. Fidel Edwards has been selected to give the bowling the potent firepower needed. All-rounder Andre Russell, another Jamaican, is still recovering from contracting COVID-19 earlier this month and despite testing negative over a week ago, was ruled out of the T20 internationals by the CWI medical panel while he completes his return to play protocols. Jamaican fast bowlers Sheldon Cottrell and O'Shane Thomas, along with batsman Shimran Hetmeri of Guyana and all-rounder Roston Chase of Bahamas, all failed to reach the minimum fitness standard in time for selection consideration. They will all remain in Antigua after the Super 50 Cup to work on their fitness and conditioning. The ODI series will be played at the Sir Vivian Richard Stadium on March 10, 12 and 14 with the final match scheduled to be a day-slash-night encounter. The series forms part of the ICC ODI Super League and these three matches provide the opportunity for West Indies to secure their first points as the team tries to qualify automatically for the 2023 ICC Cricket World Cup in India. Curfew imposed in sections of Capture Land, Young Street, Clarendon. A curfew has been imposed in section of Capture Land, Young Street, Clarendon. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Friday, February 26, and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. Sunday, February 28. The boundaries of the curfew are as follows. North, along the Bustamante Main Road from the Lionel Town entrance, vicinity intervals to Moorlands and interval to the Perrin Cane Farm. West, along the Bustamante Drive from the entrance to the intersection that leads to the Lionel Town community. South, along an imaginary lined thick vegetation from the end of Armstrong Drive. East, 
along the Moorlands Main Road from the entrance to a right turn to the entrance of capture land. During the hours of the curfew, all persons within the boundaries are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized in writing by the ground commander. 4. Including female held after seizure of illegal gun, ammunition, and more. Law enforcers assigned to the St. Andrew North Police Division arrested four persons, including a female, after an illegal firearm, ammunition, and other illicit items were seized on Sunrise Crescent in the parish on Wednesday, February 24. The following items were seized. A Browning 9mm pistol, 18 5.56 rounds of ammunition, 12 9mm rounds of ammunition, two 12-gauge cartridges, two Glock 9mm magazine, one pound of ganja, one imitation bulletproof vest. Reports are that about 8 a.m., an operation was conducted at the premises in the area during which the firearm and the ammunition were found in a hole in a wall. The ganja and the imitation bulletproof vest were found in a bedroom. All four persons were subsequently arrested. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.